How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for physiology for step one. 31-year-old woman goes on a 15-mile run. She not drink water during this time. Following the run, considerable perspiration is observed. She then rests for 15 minutes without drinking water. Question wants to know which the following most likely seen as patient. Let's just stop at the answer choice here. Choice A, decreased filtration, fraction, wrong fucking answer. So in the setting of decreased renal perfusion, we're going to have upregulation of RAS, renal angiotensin aldosterone system. Angiotensin 2 will constrict the efferent arterioles, causing a hydrostatic pressure back up the glomerulus. Filtration fraction is going to be GFR divided by renal blood slash plasma flow. So if you have constriction of the efferent arterioles causing that hydrostatic pressure backup, we're going to have a maintenance of GFR divided by reduced renal perfusion, which means increased filtration fraction. Choice A, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, decreased urinary protons, wrong fucking answer. We know it's wrong because if anything, aldosterone will be increased, and one of its functions is to upregulate the proton ATPase pump on the apical membrane of the cortical collecting duct. So we'd have increased urinary protons in this case. Choice B, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, increased cryotonous baroreceptor firing rate, wrong fucking answer. So this one's exceedingly high yield. And I would say for USMLE, students frequently get it wrong, which you need to know that the carotidinous baroreceptors, they are stretch dependent, meaning if we have increased blood pressure, there's increased firing. If we have reduced blood pressure, dehydration, decreased firing. Heart failure as well, systolic dysfunction, decreased firing because we have decreased systolic impulse pounding those carotids, so decreased stretch. So some students erroneously think that the baroreceptors, quote unquote, wake up in response to any change in pressure, that's not the case. So if you have decreased blood pressure, you're gonna choose a down arrow for carotidinous baroreceptor firing rate. It's a long fucking discussion. I talk about this stuff in my high arrows PDF as far as glossopharyngeal, uh, cranial nerve nine, afferent up to the solitary nucleus of the medulla, followed by vagus nerve, same direction, coming down efferent to the atria slash nodal tissue, okay? Sympathetic activity, opposite direction. Point is, Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, increased potassium secretion, correct answer. So as we just mentioned, RAS is going to be upregulated, and one of the effects of aldosterone is to upregulate the sodium potassium ATPase pump in the basal lateral membrane of the cortical collecting duct, where sodium is reabsorbed, potassium is secreted. The word secreted means excreted through the tubular wall. Okay, so Increased potassium secretion. You need to know that caloresis, fancy word for micturation, urination of potassium, we'd have increased caloresis in the setting of increased aldosterone. USMLE asks this, okay? So finally, choice C, increased one alpha hydroxylase, wrong fucking answer. No relevance whatsoever. Obviously, uh, this enzyme normally present in the proximal convoluted tubule and is upregulated by PTH, okay? So it's going to convert inactive 25D3 into Active 125D3, the latter goes to the small bowel, increases calcium absorption. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal makes you make more content if you click on stuff, subscribe my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.